This project will probably take five years off my life if I had to guess. Uh, two of those years will be due to the inhalation of dust even though we're wearing a mask. And the uh, other three years are just because boats, boats just take years off your life. On today's episode of One Day Projects that have turned into week two, we are sanding down the entire top side of the Southern Girl. This is my crab boat. It had some kind of issue with like the gel coat or something bonding to the fiberglass. Ever since I bought this boat, I've had problems where the gel coat would be peeling off in big chunks. And I've been putting it off as long as I... <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I've been putting it off as long as I possibly can uh, and bandaging the problem, but it's been getting to a point where it is just starting to fall off and I don't want to do any damage to the fiberglass underneath of it. So we've been sanding it down and it, we were just going to do the top, but since it's not bonding, we have to sand it all the way to fiberglass and then start from the, from the bottom up, basically. I think I'm just going to do either an epoxy paint I probably won't redo gel coat. Uh, I'm just going to do some kind of paint so that I can fix it if it gets screwed up. I mean, this ain't no, uh, ain't no fancy yacht here. This is a boat for catching crabs. So it don't have to look that nice. I just, you know, I'm trying to, trying to make it last here. All this stuff here goes on the boat. This big aluminum rack hangs off the stern about six foot to extend the, uh, the transom there to have some extra working space. This thing here has all these holes in it. These hold my buoys. This thing stands up like that and goes on the washboard. And all this is the rub rail from the side of the boat. That's what started this whole deal. We have already done quite a bit of work on this thing. It's pretty painstaking and I would rather pretty much do anything but sand and paint. That's why I've been putting it off as long as I have, because it's just my least favorite thing to do. But problem is, you put it off this long, it's kind of like, it's going to just take you a long time to do it. So we got the hard pads out and the sanders. We're covered in dust. This is the second week now we're working on it. And we have the whole gunnel, the washboards, the collar boards, and the whole cabin to do. It's flaking off so bad on the cabin Right now, Matt's up there with a scraper just scraping off chunks of uh, gel coat or paint or whatever it is. Whatever it is, it ain't holding. So he's going to scrape off the big chunks, vacuum it up, and then we're going to go at it with sanders, sand this whole thing down. We already have a lot of hours into this. Get on board here and take a look at her so all this was you know paint it had this like gray primer stuff on the glass and then a white you know white stuff look look at that look like this and we were just gonna rough up the white but it was starting to peel up it wasn't uh wasn't bonded properly i guess so all the cleats all the little uh the like the rub rail and stuff we had to take all that off i'm gonna have to drill out and fill all these little screw holes and then re-drill everything i don't want moisture and stuff getting down in there we've done all the inside like this was a whole huge chunk that peeled off in one big piece we had to sand all that out and wherever it's cracked in here it's bonded a little better in here we've fared it out I also have some fiberglass repair work to do on places like here. It's just a wear spot. Fared this out. I'm going to get some fiberglass and fix up this kind of stuff. It's not rotten. It's just wet right there. Boats are those kinds of things that you can literally spend as much time and as much money as you have or want to on it. And there will still always be something to do. We are working on this right now, but after that, we got to sand the floor down and do all that. The floor doesn't really have any holes in it or anything, but it's nice to put some paint on it every couple years. You know, we've been walking on fiberglass. It's just really hard to find any kind of paint or anything that will stick and hold up to the job because there will be little paths everywhere that we walk on the deck here. Uh, you know, that it just wears the paint right off of it. 
And after I get all that done, I could always put more money into this roof, you know, and either build a new one out of wood or aluminum. I'd probably try to build one out of aluminum. Just, it would lighten the boat up a lot. This wooden fiberglass roof is super heavy, but it's starting to trap some moisture in here and that needs attention. Thing is, when the boat is a working boat, they just take a lot of abuse. So you kind of have to draw the line somewhere. You can't go chasing every little thing, you know, trying to get it totally perfect. Uh, it just is what it is. You can't, you'll waste all your time and money trying to keep your boat in tip top shape, looking nice just to go out and get it dirty. And this is what it was starting to look like. This is what kicked off this whole project. Really this section between the two rub rails or the edge and the rub rail was starting to flake up like this. And I was like, man, you know, I don't, I don't want the fiberglass to get damaged and, and whatever else. So we took it all off and now it's turned into this, sanding it completely down to bare fiberglass, fairing it out on the sides so we can primer and paint everything. And we're doing collar boards here too. There's different terminology for these parts of boats, depending on where you're at and who's built them and who's using them usually. On a work boat, we usually call this piece that's slanted that comes down off of the back of the cabin, the collar board. And then at some point they just start to call it the washboard and kind of goes around like a perimeter. This here is what they call a gunnel. And you can walk all over these and everything. They make them wide on work boats so you have a little bit of walking space. The cabin is really the worst part of this. The cabin needed it the most. And so we started on the opposite end because that makes a ton of sense, right? I'm hoping that we don't have to pull these windows out and everything. In reality, we probably should, but I'm the kind of guy where I'd rather spend twice as much time trying to sand around them because I don't want to have to pull the windows out instead of just doing it half the time, and taking the time to pull the windows out. It's just kind of like boat logic. It's starting to get pretty bad here on the cabin. It's peeling off in these big chunks and everything and fiberglass does not love UV light. Can... This has become quite the ambitious endeavor here. And uh, I also have another boat on the way that will be here this week that I'm bringing home from New Jersey. So I'm just really a glutton for punishment. I am not looking for perfect. I'm just looking for passable. It's just gotta not be exposed fiberglass. And that'll be good enough for me. As you can see, I'm already completely covered in cancer dust here. It is what it is. The best, best boat's a friend's boat, and that's true. That's a fact. So when you're in the business of uh, owning and running boats every day, especially when you're this hard on them, uh, it's life shortening. This scraper is my favorite. It is certainly from the early to mid 1900s, but it works pretty good. It's got a little wobble in it, but it's all right. We pretty much got all the paint scraped off that we could get scraped off on the cabin. And now this is the last time you'll see me not completely covered in uh, dust here. So we're going to start grinding. I'm going to start on the work float, grind all the way around. That's the Southern Girl 2 right there. Go down to 60 grit and then go back up to 120. It's going to be a process. Probably got a couple days of grinding and sanding just on the cabin here, I'd imagine. I'm skimming all these holes that uh, had drill bit holes in it on the side of this boat here. I wouldn't say I'm doing the best job in the world, but I've seen worse. In fact, I've done worse work. There's a boot print and some tacky compound there, and that's uh, that's not my boot print. That's Matt's boot print, but uh, I guess you'll have that on these big jobs. Well, I don't know what I was thinking or what I wasn't thinking. But as you can see here, I went through all the trouble of cutting different size pieces and then 
promptly laid them all in in the complete opposite order that they're supposed to be. I started with the biggest piece and then went to the second biggest piece and then the third biggest piece and then realized that you're start, supposed to start with the smallest piece and go to the second biggest piece and then the largest piece. So I think it'll play though. I think she'll be fine. We'll sand her down, put some paint on her. You won't even notice. See, and I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but I tell you what, with projects like this, See, this is not an uncommon thing among guys like me or gals. You know, they'll get a project, they're all gung-ho about it. They get down to this point and then they realize like, oh my gosh, getting it to this point was the easy part. Fixing it, getting it back to the where it was or when I started or where I wanted it to be or even close, that's the hard part. You know, so for instance, somebody might buy a car, like something I would do, I'd buy a car that's pretty well past its prime, and I'd think, man, that's a great deal on that car. I, I'm losing money not buying that car. And I'd get it, and then you'd take it all apart, and you say, oh, man, you got this vision. You're like, man, I'm going to be drag racing down the highway. It's going to be screaming eagles on the hood. Do all that work, and then you realize, oh, my God, I didn't label uh, literally anything I took off. Uh, this is way more expensive and there's way more time involved, and everything has taken twice as much money and three times as much time as it was supposed to. And then you're left with a project that's halfway disassembled and not really worth anything until you actually put it back together. That's when it would usually sit in your parents' garage or in a field for the next at least decade, and kind of like the rest of your hopes and dreams sort of just get covered in a bunch of other random, redundant crap that you're never going to use. Like, whatever. Christmas decorations, things like that. Um, anyway, the point is, the reason that this is either a really good thing or a really bad thing for me is that um, I need this boat to make a living and go to work. So I don't really have a choice but to put it back together. And we have not even sanded the floor yet. This is just from walking on the floor down the fiberglass. We're going to sand the floor tomorrow. Back of the house... All sanded up. I'll go up here and take take a gander. See what I've done, what I've gotten myself into. All the way up here, the whole house. Cabin sanded down. I've been up here filling all these holes with glass. This is tacky still. So I can re-drill holes. The whole thing, got the whole winder crab pot winder sticks out here yeah that's on the floor now oh boy i've done it now and just like any other project once you get into a project you tend to find things uh that you weren't looking for you know like little pieces of the washboard that need to be cut out and replaced because they got some moisture in there actually on that side and i'm gonna fix that tomorrow and trying to like document this whole process because i know how much you guys all love to watch me suffer uh, but I tell you what, this is a pain in the tail thing to try to self film between the dust and the noise of the sanders and having other guys running around here and just everything getting covered in resin. Then you touch your phone. My phone's like completely covered in fiberglass resin now. Oh man. And I lost an AirPod. I'm still mourning the loss of my AirPod. RIP. Oh, sorry, Scott. A little emotional there. Um, it's just a pain in the butt. So I'm just going to be doing like update videos, you know, as we get progress on this whole project. Uh, I'm excited to be working with Total Boat. They're going to send me all the paint that I need to finish the top side here. I will say, if nothing else, I'm a man of consistency. Because this is a classic thing where I try to cut corners. Because I'm like, I don't want to put this much effort into this job. You know, I have a million things to do like this just needs to be you know a quick fix here and then I end up just costing myself time because then I have to undo the quick fix uh, yet I keep yet I keep doing it over and over and over again over and over again but I'm getting a little better uh, you know just from learning some hard painful mostly expensive lessons that's how I'm gonna learn but yeah uh, T minus like just a couple months till crabbing and uh yeah my boat is in a bajillion pieces so we're in good shape
Oh yeah, I forgot to leave out the detail that uh, I don't really have any idea what I'm doing. I've really never done paint work on a boat, uh, so I'm just diving in head first. Just gonna figure it out as we go.